So when you put an openly readable network together with an openly readable protocol, basically people can read exactly what you're doing. It's like it's just very generic eavesdropping. This can be fixed, and so we'll talk about it afterward. Uh, all of Twitter's traffic is in plain text, except for what I just noticed now. The actual login authentication is encrypted, but after that, it really isn't. After, when you log in, you send it to an HTTPS, which is HTTP secure, which we'll cover in a minute, and your password and username is basically encrypted over that line. But after that, it's not encrypted, so it's all plain text. When you're browsing, it's in plain text. This line obviously is wrong, it's sent in plain text. It's not, so don't worry. When you browse, your identifier is sent in plain text, and basically everything except when you actually log in is sent in plain text. So, every time you navigate to a new page on Twitter, you get a unique identifier. This is actually really good because it prevents people from constantly over and over just completely taking over your account. Because your identifier is constantly changing. There's a very small window for any attacker to hijack your account to actually, you know, use your account. So, this is actually a very cool feature. But the session doesn't get destroyed after a amount of time. So if you just say post to Twitter saying, hey guys, I'm at Barcamp LA, and then walk around and do some stuff, your unique identifier is still there. So if somebody listened in on the line and got your identifier, then you have a problem because then they can just use they can just spoof themselves as you. So if you're constantly sending this identifier over and over open an openly readable network, anyone can just pluck that identifier off the wire and then send it to Twitter to use it as you. So, what can this person do if they have your Twitter account and they have your Twitter cookie? Well, they can post as you, they can modify your profile, they can remove and add friends. But the good thing is, because of a very common security measure that a lot of people employ, they cannot change your password. And this is because they need to know your password in order to change your password on Twitter. The cookie and the identifier don't actually reveal your password, which is very good and it's, a very, it's very smart. So, that way, basically, people cannot take complete and total control of your account. They only have temporary control. At worst, they'll, you'll, you will wind up being signed out because they're taking your identifier and constantly resetting it. And basically, the only, the only power they will wield is being able to post, which is probably a big enough problem as it is. So, this style of account hijacking isn't necessarily Twitter's problem. It's just a generic problem that happens when you're out in public. Your cookie is being sent out over plain text over and over and over. So, if it's really hard, especially in a public place like this, one of the more common methods to protect against, you know, this type of attack is to bind the session to your IP address. But we're in a public circle where all the data is going from one IP address, so that won't really you at least explain down. how right. how one. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So go through the process? Yeah, yeah I'm going to all go through the process. So basically... 90% of it. Yeah, or at least some of it. So basically, I have acquired this cookie in some way or another. And basically, now that I have this cookie, I can use a certain tools for certain browsers, such as Firefox, in order to actually just replace what my cookie is. And it's very simple. It's literally just copy this cookie into my cookie field, and it, then just go to Twitter. And Twitter will say, okay, well, you have this identifier. Obviously, this means that you're this person, even if I wasn't even signed into Twitter to begin with. So, obviously, the problem here lies with the fact that we are, we are sending our authentication data over open lines. And we don't want this to happen, because we don't want people to post on our Twitter accounts. That was fucking scary. So how the hell do you fix this? So, Facebook is a different story. Facebook does every single thing over HTTPS. Pretty much everything is encrypted over Facebook. So this is very good because it prevents, um, you know, these types of attacks. Twitter has this feature too. Yeah, well, no, it Facebook has HTTPS no, by default. It doesn't default to HTTPS. Really? It doesn't? It defaults your login to HTTPS. The rest of it goes over HTTP unless you standard define HTTPS. Okay, well, Facebook is fucked too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so well, this, this attack may not work against Facebook. It there there are against other against mitigating that. factors against it. It's true. Yeah, yeah. It works against Facebook. <laughs> Let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> yeah. So basically, Twitter has this feature too, but you know it's not enabled by default. When you log in, it sends you to HTTPS, but everything else is done over plain text. So here's how you fix this. Here you have HTTP Twitter. No, don't do that. <laughs> if you do HTTPS Twitter.com, then everything will just go over HTTPS, and everything will be encrypted over an HTTP so secure so they, channel. Do they support it at SSL and not yes, they do. it back to yes. oh, okay. as long as you find HTTPS before. Yeah, but if you do it, they'll keep it more yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you just go to HTTPS, yeah. Why don't they redirect it on their own to HTTPS? That's yeah. a good load. question. It's a good question. It's load. I, well, it takes a lot more load to balance all the load. users. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, it's, it's more CPU costly. By having to offload everything to their crypto engines, they either need SSL accelerators, which is going to cost a lot of money, or they need CPU power. We did that at an anomalizer. Yeah, we had. 
We had well, separate cards. Yeah, they got funding, but, but they have to pay those 30 but employees. <laughs> 30 employees are expensive. Money and, you know, it pretty much thickens your traffic going through network, so everything... Well, it also makes it harder to troubleshoot for them. I mean, there's a, there's a handful of reasons not to use HTTPS as a business. Yeah, the overhead is an end user. Like, you yourself can go in and pop the S into the, uh, the Twitter, so you have the... Um, you have the SSL encryption, there's going to be almost zero overhead for your usability. For, on a massive scale, there would be a considerable overhead on servers that are already stressed to their max. I don't know if you notice, but not certain times the server's pretty stretched. I heard also that their API, though, is even worse. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. Or some shit like that. Yeah, TweetDeck does not use this itself. TweetDeck no. actually support. uses a completely separate interface that doesn't even support it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, the yeah. end. So, so well, one little yes. There's also another, actually, if I can interject, yeah, sure. it's helpful, but, so, um, I run the Barcamp San Diego network, and, uh, we don't have hardware quite as eloquent as this, um, we have a single Cisco AP1220, mm -hmm. and when you have 150 people trying to use an access point that can only support 75 people, one of the neat things you can do from an administrative standpoint is what uh, Cisco calls it port protected, and what, all that means is wireless clients cannot talk to each other. So if you are an admin of a network and you are cognizant of this kind of stuff, turn on port protected or the equivalent. That means your you, you people can't share files over the network, but it also reduces lots and lots of bandwidth because NetBIOS goes away. Nobody's, you know, you're not having Windows boxes all automatically shared to each other and Macs automatically start. iTunes that? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. iTunes goes away, all that fun stuff goes away. So the, every individual on the network becomes an individual that can see themselves and the internet, and that's it. So it kills a lot of bandwidth, but it also turns off the ability for somebody to spin up Wireshark and capture that kind of data. So until they go, it's a one-line config change. Until they go in, plug into your switch, and decide to sniff directly off your switch, which you've also had happen at, at, at our campus. <laughs> yeah, but that was part of my hacking contest. <laughs> I'm just saying, there are mitigating factors. Right, 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 right. But oh yeah, yeah. But anyway, basically, what that one little S solves is people spoofing your username, people reading possible private tweets or even your private messages between one another, and people seeking out any other information you may be transmitting to that website, or just in general. It's like maybe somebody is seeing your strange Google queries that you don't want other people to see. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you're looking for feed on Google. I don't know, maybe that's your thing, and you don't want other people to do that. So if you just do the, the little S, not everybody supports that little S, though. That's, that's one of the main problems. Like, SS, SSL over HTTP isn't widely supported, so you really have to be careful. So basically what we want you to leave with this talk is that you have to understand that when you're using a public access point anywhere, be it Starbucks or here at Barcamp or somewhere else, you take a risk because basically anybody can read your data, and that can be a problem. This also applies for iPhones. One of the things that happened at DEF CON 16 last year, there's this thing called the Wall of Sheep. Which <laughs> <laughs> and basically what, what the Wall of Sheep is, is because DEF CON is a security conference, everybody should be securely minded. So as a way to embarrass people to be secure, we have the Wall of Sheep, which shows masked usernames to a degree and masked passwords to a degree yeah. that, bas that they have basically snipped off the wire. Well, an important thing to note about Wall of Sheep is that there are ways to get around these really crazy advanced crypto tactics like SSL, but they're not common. Yeah. For the most part, nobody's going to stroll up behind you and actually start mad at rolling and doing these crazy advanced tactics. But the thing with Wall of Sheep... That depends on where you are. Okay. But the thing with Wall of Sheep is they're very strict. They do not do any decrypting, even if they can. Yeah, it's clear text only. They're yeah. very, text very strict only. on the fact that we are only owning Sheep. People yeah. who are not encrypting their traffic by choice. But if you are a corporate user, if you are an employee of Cisco, for example, who decides to log into some routers while you're at DEF CON, Please. your traffic may be put on the Wall or of Sheep. Or play a hacking game? Was it, wait, or was play it a hacking game? game. Install, uh, outside, yeah, uh, yeah. You, 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 you will potentially be, uh, be noted. <laughs> was it 15 or 16 where that guy from the Chinese government was checking his email? 14. Yeah. It was 14? That, that was Anyway, awesome. and it was oh, oh, it was Jap yeah, some, some government official was checking their government email unencrypted. apparently had logins to boxes that controlled at some level nuclear weapons. Awesome. So basically, one of the things that happened yep. at uh, DEF CON 16 is that everybody was, you know, this is like the dawn of the iPhone. So everybody bought iPhone, the iPhone, and they bought their iPhone app and stuff like that. And whenever the iPhone notices that there's an open Wi-Fi network, by it default. connects. By default. It connects by default. And when it connects by default, all your applications start logging in. So they had to publicly say, hey guys, don't turn off this feature on your iPhone because now we have all your passwords.